Hello everyone, welcome back to our last episode uh, of our podcast on diversity and equality. It's Michelini with Rafael and Lupita. And today we have Ellie with us and she's a PhD student here at Reykjavik University. Ellie, uh, would you like to give a short introduction of yourself? Yes, uh, hello guys and thank you. Hey, I'm Ellie, I'm from Greece, I'm finishing sort of uh, my PhD studies here in Iceland uh, in theoretical computer science and mathematics. Uh, I finished uh, an applied mathematics school in Greece, which is also a master's. And then I came here because as part of the lab that I finished there, my thesis, they were inviting people to give talks. And um, a friend of current friend of mine gave, made me aware of an opening here for a PhD. And I didn't think too much about it. <laughs> because I knew I wanted to do a PhD and I knew I wanted to do it abroad and it looked good and it sounded good. So I just went for it and here I am. Fantastic. Actually, you asked, uh, you actually answered my second question. I was supposed to ask you, <laughs> how did you end up <laughs> here in Reykjavik University? But you already said that. Oh, oh, that's... All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, I think that's how I ended up and that's who I am. And so for this equality podcast, um, what is your point of view as a young researcher about equality? So having seen the previous podcasts as well and uh, being part of this community and seeing this equality and diversity days, my take on this, my special perspective, I suppose, I'm not somebody who has had it really tough in life, just like many of our, the other interviewees. But currently, I am a foreigner in this country. And before that, I was a woman in science in Greece, which both can say are a slightly shorter straw than <laughs> the best sized straw in those situations. Uh, however, it hasn't, I think, affected me very much directly. Maybe made it a little bit harder sometimes, uh, especially socially and not uh, scientifically, because scientifically, deep down, we all do what we like. Hopefully, we don't get discouraged too much from uh, difficulties we find along the way. So for me, equality and diversity are good things as a person. I Deep down inside me, I know they're correct, and we should believe that every human is entitled to be di as diverse as they like, and they're still equal with the other people. Um, so yeah, I think that's my take, at least how my life has shaped my opinion so far on these things. And then of course, there's a very big discussion about how are these things indeed in these communities that I am part of, and uh, how do we make them better? Yes, what do we personally do? What do we do as a community, etc. That's nice. that's my take. <laughs> Do you want me to uh, continue? <laughs> well, if you want, you can. But I can I can actually ask you a very short question. You said um, socially uh, the equality and diversity issues uh, may have affect you, but not academically, because in academia, people should do what they like to do when they uh, get the equal chances. Um, do you think somehow these two factors affect each other? So rather. Wait, I'm not sure I understood your question, but I just wanted to clarify that mm -hmm. my what I meant is that even though maybe something was suboptimal, let's say, in my experiences, potentially and not very much, since I was a person who knew what uh, I wanted to do, mm. it didn't really affect it very much, uh, affect at least how I ended up. Maybe it meant some adaptations to my everyday behavior sometimes, uh, maybe it meant some hardships. For example, when I moved to Iceland, I had to be a foreigner, which not because of Iceland, but because of the concept of being a foreigner, I think is, again, like not as easy as being a local. Um, but again, since I needed, no, I knew what I wanted to do, then it didn't matter at the end. It didn't matter in my studies. It didn't matter at my choices of life. Okay. So that's what I meant. Do you, I thought, I thought you meant something different or I'm... Uh, more or less, I thought you kind of, like in a very short term, I thought you kind of have some hardship in social life, but not in the academia life. So I just wanted to ask, like, if these two... No, matters... no, in academia as well, I think these things matter. They make themselves presented. Uh, 
how comfortable you feel in a workspace, mm-hmm. be it because you are a foreigner or be it because you are one girl amongst 50 guys or something, or even other aspects like race or other things that make you who you are, they can make you feel uncomfortable in a workspace or in a social space. And since workspaces and social spaces are not that separate, uh, yeah. it, it matters a lot uh, whether you decide to stay, for example, in in a workspace. I think it might have to do with how well you, how good of a time you have. Uh, so no, to me, it didn't matter too much, but I think overall it does make a difference. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask you a very good question. All right. Because uh, we say that our department is very diverse because we have people from all over the world and from different culture, different race and different language. Uh, do you think as a department, we have all the facilities to offer to accommodate this diversity? So uh, diversity, as at least I see it in this department, which indeed we have many foreigners, at least, and many women and men. Now, other aspects of uh, Diversity are a bit hard to mention, I suppose, or detect, so, okay. But um, I don't think it has really to do with facilities necessarily. Mm -hmm. For example, I don't think that me as a person requires any special facility in comparison to a man or or an Icelandic person or an Icelandic woman. Uh, I think I require the minimum amount of facilities, which is a desk, and that doesn't have to do with anything about my personality or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, if you expand a bit the definition of what's needed to make this workspace workspace very diverse and very um, welcoming, let's say, we're very good, uh, I think it's a lot of matter of rather culture and behavior and not a matter of actual physical items like, I don't know, I, I don't even, I can't even really bring into my head what a good facility for accommodating diversity could be. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be necessarily a thing or uh, I, I, like I think I, I can provide an example to that. Yeah. Yeah, when I, I did my, my master in the UK, uh, the university had a prayer room for those uh, students with um, specific needs for their religion and their culture. That could be an example yeah, yeah. for the facilities. So uh, it is my understanding, for example, that here there is a space where you can indeed pray. However, this is not something that is stated anywhere. And more like yeah. people who actually decide to come here have found a way to <laughs> pray if they want to. Yeah, which we is have something a meditation I think that, room. Medit- yeah, something like that, of course, yeah. Um, it, so my, my take on this is that uh, it's a matter of uh, how people welcome you. So, of course, if you need a meditation room or if you need a prayer room or if you need anything, uh, of maybe require some privacy. I'm sure most universities have a space like that. I mean, it's not that hard to have a space. It's just a space. Uh, However, in order to make these people welcome, make anyone who requires something like this welcome, it's a matter of how you make them see that there is this option for them. And regardless of them being a minority, I think such an information should be accessible. Uh, So that, for example, if somebody who actually needs a prayer or meditation room and they're thinking of applying here or thinking of doing a PhD here, they should be able to access this information and say, aha, I will not be there and feel like an alien. I will be there and feel like my diversity, my kind of diversity is part of what is expected, part of what's okay. And I think that's what matters a lot at the end for people, not not having a leaflet that says we like diversity, but how they are personally treated in their individualities. I agree. And yeah, feeling welcomed is not just a matter of saying, ah, yes, all of our courses are in English. Of course, we are a diverse school. That's true. (laughs) Of course, it makes a difference. But then again, uh, when you come to the country, you don't know anything in general. I think you feel quite a lot potentially like somebody, yeah, who's from a different planet. And I think there is a lot how the people treat you and how the information is accessible for you so that you can adapt yourself even, or they can adapt yourself themselves to you. So that your, your experience is at least like, it feels like an equal experience for a PhD potentially student who's local. So basically you're saying that just advertising div- diversity is not a sufficient condition, but it's a necessary condition. So it's, it would be necessary to have 
a course is in English, but it's not enough to just have courses in English and just a paper saying, yes, diversity will come on this kind of thing. I mean, that's necessary, but that's not sufficient. I think, uh, no, it's not sufficient. Uh, and uh, I think it's individual behaviors that make the biggest difference at the end. And that's where I'm glad to believe that because uh, then I, it makes me believe that, ah, since individual behaviors matter, then I can have a team based on my behavior. I can have a surrounding, a close surrounding that fits with me because my personal behavior matters to them. And then I attract people who are more like me. They will behave, communicate better. My surrounding can be diverse because I enable it through mm -hmm. my behavior. So yes, indeed, like I saw the other day, the discussion with uh, Verity from the international office, but, and indeed everything she said is true and, and everything she said is important. But that doesn't mean that the student who comes from uh, a different university will not go to the class and not realize even how the style of classes is here, because that is assumed to be so normalized and no, like how a course takes place here uh, is so normal in the side of the people who give the course, who, who are locals. Uh, that, okay, we talk to the professors, it's informal, there's uh, a fluidity in the style. Uh, that, but that is not explained anywhere to somebody. So a, a, a person who's not used to this kind of procedure might actually have hardship in his education. And I don't think that's, uh, mm -hmm. like, I think that there's work to be done there. I think there's work to be done there for example, for professors who are going to have students that will be taking their courses that are not locals, the professors need to be aware that not everybody is in the same page about how my style is, just because not everybody is from here, not everybody is used to this all their lives. And especially the people who are not from here, they're the ones who have the hardest time, so I should try to help them because be the minority, minorities have rights. It's not just, oh, okay, you're a minority, I will just. So, so you're, so you're uh, saying that it's also a personal work. I mean, that's not something that is, can be yes. solved only by taking a uh, decision. I mean, general decision, institutional decision, but it's also a personal work. Everyone should take, I mean, should be uh, uh, careful about that, basically. Careful and uh, everybody should be a good person. Yeah, <laughs> I know that's... it sounds very general, but... In an ideal world, yes. If, if you want to work in a good environment, then I'm lucky to work in a good environment. And I think, first of all, my environment is full of foreigners, like really full of foreigners. There's one local person in it, which is on itself uh, like quite like that person is diverse in comparison to the rest <laughs> of the group. Um, so I think that actually makes a big, a big difference to how many foreigners you have in your group because the foreigners being foreigners, they are already used to the idea that I have to adapt, I have to accommodate other people who feel equally alien as I do uh, in this place we are at. And thus, uh, this facilitates being a nice group, which invites more, more and more like different ideas. It's a very free, a much freer environment than, for example, a, a, a place where you are the only foreigner, most people are okay, they accept you. I don't have any problems with this here. People are not racist in the general case. They are not, um, they don't have any prejudices against at least me. Uh, however, the fact that they let you exist is not the same as uh, being equals. So in order to have diversity, I think uh, there's equal, <laughs> equally big effort to be done from both parties being it a foreigner or being it uh, something else that needs to be included in a set. And since we're all, yeah, we all are looking for good uh, work environments and we want diversity in our work environments, then there's work to be done from everyone's side, not just the new person to adapt or, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you, you gave us a, a really nice and highly valuable opinion about how they um, awareness can be raised here at the university, but um, yeah, since you have been here for more years than us and you have more experience being a PhD student here, do you have any uh, recommendation or suggestion for us, uh, the other PhD, PhD students, uh, to, to do better on equality in the department? 
Um, let me think about this. So an advice for other PhD students, uh, how to, about the quality in the department. You already said be a good person. Yeah, be a good yes, person. Yes, indeed, be a good person, I think is a very important thing. Yeah. I think uh, from somebody, okay, so for PhD students, assuming that we are all starting something new, uh, having to work with new people, maybe, I think, um, I think you should view this diversity and this, uh, I think I think that's something good as well, yeah, that we shouldn't, indeed everyone accepts that the quality and diversity are good things, but, and yet sometimes as people, we prefer staying in our comfort zones and um, basically everyone, everyone in their head thinks, I know how is the good way to do things. I know how it's good to be social, maybe another culture does social, being social different, but my culture does the best. Uh, I think it's uh, important for us to stay open-minded, not only about social things, but uh, about everything, about how people do their work differently, how their habits can be different. Uh, I think if we uh, adapt ourselves to not necessarily change our ways, but to be willing to see from the other person's perspective, then it helps a lot with how your studies will go, how wide of a community you will create, um, and even potentially how well you will collaborate with someone. Um, and yeah, of course, there's a lot of spectrums on what you can see from another person's perspective. So even though it's scary, basically, to be the new person, to be the, let's say, the diverse person, I think from our side, then there's that effort to be done to see, okay, maybe here is different, but what do they have right? What, what is their perspective on all of this stuff that I see as differences between us? Not, yeah, we shouldn't have to adapt in everything, but it's good to be open-minded, to be willing to see other things as well. Hope that that counts as advice. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm not that much older than you guys. <laughs> no, no, it does. Actually, um, I was having a panel discussion before and we were, talk, um, we were talking about that we should express ourselves as equal. I think that's what you are saying, like, you should be open and you should let know the other person that I am open to all possibilities and that I am yes. welcoming. And that should be because somehow when new people are coming here in Iceland, anywhere from world, maybe they are feeling a bit scared. Maybe they are very open and good person, but it's just the environment that is new and they kind of need that welcoming gesture from the other person. And yes, I think why. it's important when you when you are the local to be inviting. Yeah. Uh, when you're not the local, it's important to be open-minded. But yeah, of course, you also have to be careful to not lose your identity because I oh. think that's also something that can happen. Uh, speaking of personal experience, uh, at least uh, from the foreign part of my experience, not the woman part, but it tends to be that uh, foreigners hang a lot out with within foreigners. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that at least uh, within foreigners, you have a, this common assumption that I don't feel comfortable here. <laughs> that, um, that uh, yeah, basically you lose parts of your personality because a lot of the things you have to do just have to, are just directly associated with the fact that you're a foreigner. For example, uh, okay, where do I find this food? Uh, how do I do this? Where's the healthcare? All of these things are things that mostly foreigners uh, tend to have struggles with, and then that brings us together. But that doesn't mean that we like like the same stuff or, uh, you know, listen to the same music, prefer spending our free time in the same way. It's just out of necessity, you become what, yeah, <laughs> what you need. And that is important to, yes, indeed, you need to be welcoming, you need to be open-minded. And hopefully, if that is the case and you manage to do this, then you won't have to go through a phase where you're just a foreigner and nothing else. Mm -hmm. okay. no, that, yeah, no, that makes sense. So don't lose your personality, but be open-minded. Yes, yes, good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not the best uh, speaker, but my heart's in the right place. <laughs> oh. No, it's not about the best speakers, it's about like this discussions yeah. that I'm loving. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was thinking as well that uh, most of the discussions I watched already were indeed very well um, positioned. There, every speaker brought their own thing into the conversation, and I didn't want to repeat any parts of already had the discussion. I thought, okay, maybe being somebody who has adapted a lot and had to see things through different eyes a lot, I thought, okay, that's what I have to bring. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I have no more questions for you, Ellie, but okay. there's a file and Lupita, do you have any more questions? For me, everything is clear. So be a good person, stay yourself, but be open-minded. <laughs> and yeah, it's, oh, of course, in this context, it's really makes sense. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's how I would summarize all of your uh, advices. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you asked me for advice, so <laughs> that's it. No, it's um, not just advices, but it's what you believe, and um, I, I like that, that you can represent your belief in clear words, and I think that's important. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, my beliefs might be more, more, more big, more extreme or something, but uh, I'm also adapting my behavior in order to have this discussion productively rather than throw an extreme belief out there and um, hope that people will adapt to me. That's like, I'm actually actively enforcing this advice that I gave you, hoping to have a better experience for all of us <laughs> instead yeah. of just, you know. Adapt on your own risk, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, otherwise okay. I can come in here to, you know, everyone who believes this is wrong and uh, it's very bad to do this but then that should potentially not be this very be and... exactly yeah exactly it's better if you try to say your opinion in a way that will be well understood and well taken rather than just alienate somebody and then okay that's the end of every discussion fantastic All right. so this is our last episode no more podcast for tomorrow and I just want to say a big thank you to Ellie for participating in our podcast. We had a nice conversation. Thank you, guys. Yes. And we will definitely continue our conversation later on. Thank you, Rafael and Lupita. It was amazing being a co-host uh, with you two. It's been an amazing experience. And Thank I you hope... very much for this invitation to co-host <laughs> with you. You're, you're most week. welcome. And yeah, hopefully thank you. in the future we can do more stuff like this. You're welcome, Lupita. Okay, bye-bye, guys. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye.